Hi, Holistic Travel Nurse. In this episode, we are going to talk about all things peppermint essential oil and why you need this peppermint essential oil in your life. And let's talk about different companies when you're buying essential oils. If you, first off, don't know anything about essential oils, then you can message below. You can you can set the link below. It's going to go, I'm going to just send you to a different um, a couple videos where they're going to educate you on what an essential oil is. And in front of me, I have a whole bunch of incredible books. But peppermint is one of them you need to be having in your house. It's one of them you need to be using every single day. Now, peppermint is amazing. Do you know that for a 15 ml bottle, it takes like 400 leaks to make it? Yeah. And of course, there are all these different types of peppermint plants out there. So they are all going to be a little different when it comes to the chemical constituents of the plant. And that's what makes it beneficial in using the peppermint essential oil. So it's funny because I take it back to my um, healthcare and as a nurse and way before I got into oils, um, I, I don't know why certain conversations with certain people will stick in your mind. And one particularly was with the physician that I trusted and liked and worked with. And we were talking about peppermint tea at the time. And she was saying how it wasn't that great. Well, it shows you that physicians are very limited <laughs> in what they know in natural healing. And if they want to give advice or something like that, then they should go get a cert certifications like I am, where you're working on your aromatherapy certification or your certification in herbs. And they shouldn't speak of it um, and advise you of it unless they are, you know, currently have a certification or working towards the certification and spent years studying it, such as I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six books in front of me this morning, all on oils and herbs. And so it's important to me to know that the chemical and the makeup of the plant and what they do for our body and how they work, because that's important. That's important when we are looking at, um, these natural components to our health. And we're looking at in, in incorporating oils. Because if you're buying an oil from Walgreens or Walmart, I'm sorry, you're not getting an essential oil. Um, what's inside that bottle, I don't, it might even smell like peppermint, but really might not have the really good therapeutic essential oil in the bottle. And I wouldn't apply it to your skin. I wouldn't even diffuse it. Artificial fragrances are the secondhand smoke. And so if it's an artificial peppermint, such as if you buy peppermint extract at the grocery store, it's not good. It's not your body knows your body is very intelligent and it knows. And people are very sensitive like myself to artificial fragrance, artificial fragrances and artificial things. Our body likes nature and we do best with whole things like whole foods. And so the same thing with the plants and the oils, our bodies use those and knows what to do with those chemicals. So it makes it really funny because some of the chemical constituents when you're coming to and talking about peppermint, if you hear the rustling of books, I'm, I'm definitely have all those books in front of me if you're listening to this on a podcast, but you, you're, you're dealing with the um, plant, right? And you're dealing with those chemical constituents inside those plants and menthol and menthol menthol is being one of the chemical constituents in peppermint that is in you see the menthol part in many of your over-the-counter stuff um like bengay to all those things but that menthol is not from an essential oil and do you think your body knows the difference that's what i have to ask you do you think your body knows the difference i i know it does i know from my personal experience of using all sorts of kind of stuff and then going to nature and going back to oils and herbs and food is medicine, my body knows the difference and my body responds differently with those chemical constituents. So when it comes to peppermint, uh, there are, you know, those definitely chemical constituents of the plant and that being the strongest one of it. And so that is the, and it's the, in the family of lakin. And of course we get it from the, the leaves um, and so, and, and peppermint has an incredible history in the Greek, um, it, it, and in the Roman history, you can go back, there was studied then, and then you can see, I have, if you are in my private Facebook group, 
we're educated on gut health um, and you can research gut in my private Facebook group and pep and then I put all the studies there to peppermint and when it comes to your gut health it's it's one of the top ones you need to be using every day if you've suffered with gut health issues and I'm there um, and so peppermint is it is appears to be calming to the muscles of the stomach and intestines and so in practice this is one of the books I have in front of me which is the medical herb book and so it, it, it will tell you that uh, in a topic that we can't talk about um, that it actually is super beneficial to your gut health right and so when you're talking about your um, all those gut issues you can just kind of fill in the blank you want to add peppermint to that complex so peppermint is also potent in the smell and remember it takes like over those 400 leaves so one drop um, is well like equivalent to those 28 cups of tea and so when you're using it you want to think of that it's also it's so good for so many different areas that you need to have it incorporated in your life and I'm going to give you like 10 reasons why you need to incorporate peppermint in part of your life now according to heal your gut um, with dr. Z in his book he has the 10 reasons too but um, it's a natural helps with the discomfort. So when you're working with your deep blue or something else, you can incorporate it with it or apply it on. So if I like my deep blue rub, which is somewhere around here because I, I use it a lot, and then you can put your peppermint right over it. When you're doing a protocol of putting oils on your back, you can do um, some peppermint with you. Careful when you go get massages. My peppermint story is that I thought my some of the massage therapists would all know that it, this is the pure essential oil in the bottle and they think it's usually diluted or something. And I remember telling her this, but I went in with a gift card to someone who got me to this place to a massage and she put way too many drops on me. I was freezing because it will lower your temperature. And I walked out smelling so strong that I could not go anywhere else because roll down the windows, I could barely handle the smell of myself. Um, peppermint also can be very tingling to the skin, not diluted. So, that's the other reason maybe possibly to dilute, dilute with your nice little fractionated carrier oil, right? Um, also, the bottom of the feet. And, of course, doTERRA's essential oil peppermint. They have the beadlets for you. They have peppermint intercoated. They have more than one way to get your peppermint in you because it's so it's a super, super oil that you need to be having in your house and not run low on. I don't run low on it. It is great, you guys, for helping get rid of ants, also diffusing it um, for spiders. We never really have a spider issue inside because we have so many oils that really is repellent for spiders. So if you're in a big spider thing, peppermint's great. Um, also, it's great to help get rid of ants. I'll, I'll send a link to somebody else's video who talks really well on that. Um, it's great for your um, helping open up your airways, but it's also good if you have that afternoon sluggish and you need to pick me up one drop of peppermint breathe it in and put it on the back of your neck it's going to uplift you if you're doing a long drive and you're super tired i've had friends that will diffuse this or put it on their hands when they're driving and uplift them and help them with their focus because that's when we get into the brain connection and peppermint in the brain connection peppermint in the brain will actually help with cravings so if you're cutting sugar you need to have your peppermint um as part of your routine. It's also so great for those hyperactive people and those brains that are having a hard time focus. So diffusing it, they know that it actually improves concentration and alertness. So that's great. Also, um, if you get bit by something and you have an itch, um, peppermint's great with that. So a peppermint will also help with the sticks. Burrow, um, so you can put the peppermint on if your dog or whatever, dog gets bit by a, a tick you can put the peppermint on that and it's going to back out and release so that is a trick when it comes to um, peppermint um, it also is great for many other blends and what it does also for antibacterial properties is peppermint will also help with that sludge that the bacteria makes if you've ever done microbiology like I have it makes that little sludge in there slime mucus whatever you want to call it to protect itself in the body or wherever you're growing some nice bacteria peppermint will help break down that sludge where antibiotics don't do that so that's super cool and peppermint and in, in its factors to doing that let's just look up in the modern essential book um, and 
um, I think we touched on all those. Well, there's if you looked in the Modern Essential book, the list right here of possible things that it will help you with is ridiculous. So, ladies, with your thinking hot flash or in the summer, I make a cooling spray, and so peppermint is great for that. Um, it is super powerful also for circulation, so bottom of your feet with when it comes to different things with circulations. There are more things in here that I can even comment, so I will type them all below. Let's talk about the emotional part of essential oils. There's a huge emotional part of our essential oils when we are breathing them in or putting on them topically. So in my reference guide here with your emotions and essential oils, peppermint brings abundance of heart and soul. So it invigorates the body and the spirit, reminding the individual that life can be happy. They don't have to be controlled by fear. So if you are dealing with a situation where you are fearful or you're going into a test, I used to have my kid before she goes into a test, put a couple drops of peppermint on her wrist or in her hands and breathe it in. One, we're dealing with concentration. Two, we're helping with anxious feelings before you take a test. And so with individuals that use peppermint, they feel like they're guided through life. It assists with staying surface of the emotions, like they're floating on water. The power can be felt um, of times of dis discouragement or despair. So those are the ways that you want to use your peppermint when it comes to your emotions. So if you're unbearing pain, emotions, or you're desperate, you have a heart or sadness, peppermint is one of them that you want to be diffusing some more of probably because it's so uplifting. It is compares, it, it works so great with wild orange and diffusing it together with wild orange is amazing or tangerine or your elevation blend, lime, red mandarin, um, any of your citrus ones, those pair into wild together with diffusing and helping with your emotions. Um, so they do have say a little thing about a person with, um, with some severe issues with their emotions to be careful with the peppermint, you know, that gets to be so abrasive if you're dealing with a time where you're using it in counseling. So maybe that might not be the best one if you're really trying to work through some heavy stuff. So I love it for all the gut issues. And so I love it for also for um, applying topically for all your discomfort. We know that it's great for head tension. We know it's good for focus. We know we know to keep it away from our eyes, the safety, and your nose is going to be very intense, never in your ears. We know if you get some peppermint in your hand and you touch other areas of the body, it's not great. Maybe not adding it to the bathtub. I have had friends that have done that. So if you add it to a bathtub, I would say add it to your Epsom salts and then take your bath and then it won't be so potent. Um, and so anyways, it's an oil you need to have at your house. I don't let my bottle go low. I, if it's a little teeny low, I know I'm ordering another one because of all the things we do. Besides cooking with it, and so the incredible benefits of cooking with it and making your peppermint brownies or whatever you else like peppermint with. I tried my very first time <laughs> to pe make a peppermint hot chocolate and realized you can't do one drop and just your hot chocolate. It will be too intense. So um, I would say the toothpick method and getting a deuteros and putting it in the toothpick and then add it to your hot chocolate if you love your peppermint hot chocolate um, as it gets to the winter season as I'm recording this. So thanks for listening. Please subscribe. Please share it. Please comment so that other people will see this and it will, they'll benefit from it also. Have a blessed day.